Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Liverpool are on course for one of the greatest Premier League seasons of all time. With over 2.8 points per game, it's comfortably the highest return in Premier League history. His chief rival over the past few years, Pep Guardiola, has repeatedly stated that this Liverpool side is the strongest he has ever faced. High praise from someone who also faced some of the best Madrid sides. But what tactics has Jurgen Klopp used that have led to this performance? Well, in this video, we take a look. The first thing to note is how impressive they've been statistically. Besides the high points per game, they have scored 66 goals, or 2.28 goals per game, only behind City, as well as conceding the least goals in the league, comfortably less than a goal a game. And they have outperformed the expected metrics in both boxes, showing how decisive they have been where it matters. So let's start with the lineups. Liverpool have almost exclusively lined up in a 4-3-3, using it 90% of the time, with a 4-2-3-1 being the only other alternative. And his preferred personnel has looked like this. Now, let's start with the build-up play. In Alisson, Liverpool have a keeper who's comfortable on the ball and looks to play out the ball to his centre-backs. On the occasions where opponents look to push up high on the centre-backs when the keeper has the ball, Fabinho at times can look to drop in to be the third centre-back and outnumber the opposition, thus allowing them to play out. However, Liverpool are usually able to progress through this first phase of play relatively unchallenged. And although Liverpool are perfectly capable of building up play through the centre, we'll start with their major weapon, which is verticality. Liverpool love to attack quickly, with the opposition still out of position, and long diagonals are one of their major weapons. With the full-back staying deep initially to be the support for the build-up, the midfield and the forwards shift to one side, often the left to drag the opposition across the pitch. Trent, in this situation, would often stay deeper and wider to make himself an option for the switch or would tuck into midfield. Either way, this would mean that the opposition winger would stay close to him. This opens up a potential gap in this region and depending on the situation, one of Henderson and Firmino would drop into this region while Salah would move all the way to hug the touchline, meaning that the opposition fullback has two men to keep a track of and this would give Salah more room. Van Dijk, who plays as the left centre-back, has been instructed to attempt the switch often, attempting almost 10 long balls per game, the second most in the team, and completing over 5 of them. And this switch means that Salah could suddenly be one-on-one -on -one with the opposition fullback, with the rest of the team still clustered on the left, and this leads to dangerous situations. But whilst both fullbacks are renowned for what they do higher up the pitch, from deep they're just as crucial, being heavily involved in the build-up play. In fact, aside from the centre-backs, they complete the most passes per game from deep. When they look to build on the right through Trent, the opposition recognises that he is essential to the build-up and as a result they look to pressure him and also to cut off his passing options. So Liverpool create a right-hand side overload and the opposition tends to follow them. Robertson positions himself wide, creating space for himself to receive the switch and quickly look to attack the flanks and look for the cross. And although this move can be flipped, with Robertson switching to Trent instead, it more commonly occurs this way. So switches are a big element of Klopp's Liverpool. And it's important to note that Klopp gives his players permission to fail. So although many times these switches don't come off, they have the courage to keep attempting them, as the stats show. The fullbacks and the wingers also have strong relationships. Oftentimes, the winger will look to make a deep run in behind to draw the four backs deeper. And Liverpool's wide central midfielders in Wijnaldum and Henderson are comfortable moving into the space created, whilst Firmino can potentially drop deep to try and draw the additional midfielder. So depending on who the opposition fullback chooses to pick up, Trent and Robertson then have two options on who to hit, both of which can be dangerous. But Liverpool also use interesting mechanics when building up through the centre. They prefer to build up with a back three, and although occasionally they do this the more traditional way, with the defensive midfielder dropping deep between the centre-backs, Klopp likes to keep Fabinho, the fulcrum of his team, here, so it is usually one of the wide central midfielders who pushes deep to create a three. This will either give them more time on the ball to look for a pass, or if their marker follows, this opens up room in the midfield. Firmino then often dips into the midfield to make himself an option and be found in these dangerous regions. And the back three simultaneously means that the fullbacks now have permission to drive higher up the pitch. 
And here we see an interesting relationship between Trent Henderson and Salah. Henderson often causes his danger with the off-the-ball movement, so we often see him make runs into wide regions, allowing Salah to move infield into much more central regions, and this then opens up space for Trent to tuck into midfield, or attempt crosses from much deeper regions. Henderson can also make underlapping runs to try and take a marker away from Salah, and give him room to cut infield. But when he holds his position, the fullbacks can truly advance high up the pitch, with both Mane and Salah, as well as the arriving Firmino crowd in the box. They aren't the tallest front three, but a combination of their movement, as well as their sheer numbers, mean that they are dangerous when the crosses come in. Both fullbacks attempt a lot of crosses, with the other fullback backing up play for any overhit crosses, and again, Klopp gives them permission to fail, with many inaccurate crosses per game, knowing that it only takes one to make the difference. In matches where they're chasing a goal, the wide central midfielders also make a run into the box to provide the extra body, and Wijnaldum has already popped up with some crucial goals in this manner. All of this means that despite not being the tallest, Liverpool averaged the highest headed goals per 90. But this positioning also means that often when the ball is central, Firmino can drop deep, hopefully attracting a centre back as well, whilst the inside forwards make arrowing runs into the box. Firmino can then look to flick or roll a pass into their path for the finish and Firmino has 1.44 key passes per game and an expected assist per 90 of 0.24. However, in certain matches, Liverpool are happy to adapt, whether this is shuffling the front three to disorientate the opposition or changing mid-match to a 4-2-3-1. We see this happen often when Liverpool are ahead and want to hold on to what they have. Mane and Firmino are the more defensively disciplined of the front three, so they move into the midfield with one of the midfield three moving out wide, particularly when Chamberlain plays. This allows them to have two wide men when they do get in defensive situations. But generally speaking when defending, Liverpool have still pressed high, but with much more control. Liverpool have played with a much higher line this season, perhaps a reflection of the presence of VAR, which ensures that even a millimetre would make the forward offside, which plays into the defender's hands. Their passes per defensive actions is relatively low, but there are a few teams still pressing more intensely than them. The pressing mechanism is still similar to prior seasons, with the wide forwards positioning themselves to cut off the passing lanes to the fullbacks, whilst Firmino tactically presses the centre-backs. The wide central midfielders are also highly active in the press, able to move wider if the wide forwards are bypassed or press their opposite number. And the need to cover these distances is why Klopp often opts for a more functional midfield. But when they have to defend deep, Liverpool can shift into something like a lopsided 4-4-2, and Salah often pushes high, ready for the counter-attack. Liverpool then look to maintain their shape deep whilst looking for any opportunity to intercept. They are also very dangerous on the counter, as a result due to the pace of their forwards, particularly Mane and Salah, and the willingness of their centre-backs and midfielders to play the long ball and look to get in behind the opposition fullbacks who would have gone high. As a result, Liverpool have scored the most goals on the counter-attack in the league, as well as the third highest shots from counter-attacks per 90. The defeat against Watford means that they will not be invincible, but this Liverpool side is already a machine that will be talked about for years to come. And with Jurgen Klopp happy at the club, it'll be intriguing to see how much further they can push themselves in the upcoming seasons. As always, not every tactic used could be covered in the video, but I would love if you drop any other tactics that you noticed down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, a like and a share would go a long way. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.